Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. You're not hearing things. If you hear my voice sound a little bit different, it's because I've been sick the last couple days. Uh, luckily I'm on the other side of it, but um, it's kind of backlogged me even more if I wasn't already backlogged enough on videos. But I wanted to get this video out before I leave town again. Puts me even further behind. But there's a reason why I'm going out of town. I'm going back to LA. Now, there was a primary reason I was going, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But uh, there's other reasons why I'm going as well. Not just for fun, which is that a big part of it. So if you're in the membership group, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff. My personal trainer uh, that me and my friend use is going to be there as well. We're going to have a lot of fun doing some Halloween shopping on Melrose. Lots of cool stuff for the fun side of stuff that's not audiophile related, if you like that stuff. But uh, also, Rick Brown with Hi-Fi One, a great distributor. I visited his house before. you got to check out that video. I'll put a link up here if you haven't watched that video yet. I'll probably be visiting him as well as, if possible, that Jim has that million-dollar acapella spheron system. And there's been a lot of changes since I last went out there. So I'm going to try to visit him while I'm there as well. Lots of stuff. If I'm not already behind enough, it's going to put even more backlog. But... I want to get this material while I'm out there and share it with you guys because this is really cool stuff. But the primary reason actually I was going out there other than my friend who wanted to go out there for another reason uh, is to feature something that we're going to talk about today with IO Designs speaker. It's a speaker I referenced in the Munich coverage is one of my favorites. And... Um, We've been talking about this in the WhatsApp group ever since Munich, and people have been amazed at how much I enjoyed it, you know, going into that room four times, which, to be honest, that's something uh, I rarely do, especially at a big show when I have so many other options to go into. To go into one room four times is unheard of. So on top of what I verbally shared and what I uh, subliminally communicated with how much I liked that room, there's been people in the WhatsApp group asking me about it, and kind of one of the benefits as well. I mean, we've been having a lot of fun in the WhatsApp group, and especially when I'm sick. I could still interact with you guys, and it's been fun talking about industry drama and all kinds of other stuff going on. But one of the side benefits actually is going to come out in today's video. Now, if you don't want a spoiler alert, go ahead and jump to the chapter where I start the Zoom interview with David of IO Design, where we go into that speaker in a little more detail. I didn't have as much time at Munich to get some details. And what I did is I invited some members of my WhatsApp group to be on that call and they could ask questions directly. People like Steve McCormick and other people. But spoiler time, if you don't want to watch, we talk about that speaker getting to the U.S., being the first people to have, who's going to be the first person in the U.S. to have it? Well, because it's so I'm so far behind, I'm going ahead and having to give you a little bit of spoiler now because I filmed this a while back. Um, one of my members is actually getting the IO Designs speaker, the Naked RS. He actually bought the demo model from the Munich show. And I was going to go out to L.A. to visit and, you know, film the... Uh, the uh, install and check it out, be the first to check it out. But it's kind of one of the benefits of my WhatsApp group and how we this all transpired is that I got in touch with David and some of my members expressed an interest because of my interest. And actually, this person who is taking ownership of it, the first one in America, uh, Jerry, who you've seen in other videos I've, I've released, he also has a Bach audio and a f phenomenal home and system. But he's actually going to be a home dealer for it. And also, the world's most hardcore autophile, Robert, he also went into the room. I texted him at Munich. I said, hey, you got to come check this room out. And he was not even planning to come to the show that day at all. He came to the show, went to that room. He resonated with him as well. And, you know, he's very tough to please based on all the things he's owned and heard. So he's actually getting one as well, but his is going to come a lot uh, further down the road. So again, just one of the other uh, side benefits of the WhatsApp group and some of the things we do in there. This is going to play out today. Uh, so this is just kind of part one of that interview. I did have a, it was a long Zoom where we had Q&A from my members and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and just give you the snapshot today of David talking about the IO designs because it's very innovative in terms of yeah, open baffles. There's plenty of open baffle speakers uh, with quality drivers and quality crossovers. But 
the level of attention to detail of that cabinet structure, the aluminum, and the fact that there is zero baffle. I mean, this is minimal baffle, and this is great. And you see companies will even curve surfaces, do every little thing, just the minor things possible to reduce reflections from a baffle. Well, if you believe that those things work, it's even greater when you could totally get rid of the baffle. And that's what IO Designs has done with that structure that they created. Again, aesthetically, for me, it's great. It looks great. And you can customize the paint, anodizing, leather stitching, all kinds of things. So pride of ownership, luxury good side of things, because it's not cheap. It's got that part covered for those that are interested in that aspect of it. But performance is really what I was blown away by because I've heard a lot of open baffles, but it was giving me a level of base that open baffle base tends to not give me sometimes. And that's why I do a hybrid of sealed box and open baffle. Um, and so obviously you can't deny physics. I mean, in a huger room than what was at Munich, maybe some issues <clears throat> would arise at some point when the cabinet is your room and you, you have so many drivers. But the acoustic elegance drivers that they got are really good. And also their crossover using very high quality, you know, almost without peer drivers from the acoustic elegance, their uh, AMT tweeter, and then a custom planer mid-range is also beyond reproach in many respects. But the way they're able to use their crossover to ensure that the drivers are only performing where they're optimally designed. You could put fancy drivers all together in a box, but if you have them playing outside of their accepted range, you're not getting the value that you paid for. And that's what a lot of people overlook. They just ask what type of drivers without any understanding of what the crossover is or how it's being implemented in the box, whether it should be in this box or not. These are drivers meant for open baffle. Sp certain things are done specifically. And this was a six-year project, as you will hear, of R&D. And it's not a startup company in the sense of, yes, IO Designs, you may not have heard of, but they have over 30 years in distribution and also the financing from other ventures that they are in outside of Audiophile that has allowed them to do this as a passion project versus you know, instant return, quickly get something out. So these are the kind of companies that I like to keep an eye out for. Uh, and it did pay off, at least what I heard in Munich, such that I was very interested in it. And so today you're going to hear a little bit more about that. And you're going to have two of people I know and two people I feature on the channel will be home dealers for this in the near future. So you're going to be able to hear it as well. So without further ado, let's get started with the Zoom. Subliminally, just going in your room four times, which I've done shows for a couple of years. You never see me go in a room four times. Yes, so. we've all been impressed by uh, <laughs> by, <laughs> by Jason's uh, reaction to your speakers. Yeah. They've got they have to be something special. Yeah, we were too because we 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 were uh, seeing this tall man with a cowboy hat yeah. in and out of the room. He's from Texas, you know, you have to make allowances. It was, it was fun. It was fun. Don't make me put on the cowboy hat. I can't put on my headphones if I put the cowboy hat on. But I've got, <laughs> I wore a lot of cowboy hat. In fact, I got some ta fake tattoos too. But anyway. <laughs> oh, I thought I, I thought I saw some tats appearing in your uh, club, yeah, clubbing yeah. video. <laughs> Actually, we were out with, and you know, Drake was in the table right next to us last night. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yes. So that was pretty funny. But guess who more people were taking picture of, though? My crazy outfit. <laughs> he was kind of low key. Um, and he had a lot of security around him. So uh, anyway. But getting back to really the star of this Zoom is the yeah. IO Design speakers. And uh, wanted to give a chance for Debbie to introduce himself to a wider audience um, and tell a little bit more about your background, how this speaker got designed. Um, I know we've already talked, but as if you haven't talked to me and to all the people that are on the Zoom. Um, we, when we started thinking to make uh, a, a loudspeaker, I thought, hey man, either we do something special, completely out of what is 
today, let's say technology and also design, but mainly performance, or I mean, it's, uh, it's nonsense. And when we started, it was nearly six years ago. And we started uh, thinking on what we could uh, do to overcome uh, those, uh, let's say, limitations and constraints that uh, during 35 years at that time point. As I was saying, I am a guitar player. My partner, uh, you met uh, Jason him in Munich. He is uh, graduated uh, for classic guitar play, um, uh, playing, I mean, and one of the, of the persons that uh, was into, deeply into the design of the crossover is graduated for organ. So we deeply know how instruments are playing uh, live. When you take a guitar in your, hand, in your hands and you play, you listen harmonics, you listen to sound, and we never perceive that sound out of a, really out of a system, even if we managed uh, across the years very big systems because we distributed uh, MBL, we distributed a cappella, we distributed symphonic line, Aeon, cello, I mean, a number, lumen wide, a number of big uh, names. And by distributing in Italy big names, we entered in contact with people that really had uh, big uh, systems. So we were able to, let's say, compare a sound in many different ambients, in many different situations, in shows and whatever. And we always felt some little constraint. So when we started designing and, and thinking to, to the EO design uh, project, we started from a different standpoint. And as I wrote in, uh, in, in also in the website, I mean, we needed to think out of the box and that's why we took the box out. Maybe something also important um, that you would uh, ask as a background, this is a very complicated speaker. Even, I mean, if you don't see the box and so you, you might think it's easier to make such a speaker than a wooden spe box the speaker. It's exactly the opposite. Assuming people haven't seen my videos from Munich, maybe just go through. We can't see this cross section. I'll probably pop up some pictures uh, that it's basically a very heavy aluminum shell. This is this speaker weighs about how much? Oh, the weight is uh, 85 kilograms uh, for the naked and the naked RS. Uh, we honestly did not weight it, but it should be around 95. Okay, so that's a lot of aluminum in this structure um, that people aren't seeing if they didn't see the videos I released. But also, that structure itself probably took a lot of R and D and time and cost. But also, if you could just run through real quick whatever you want to share about the driver complement, because I think what people see is that they could just do this themselves. And like you said, sometimes making an open baffle speaker that's really cabinetless is actually more difficult than a traditional box design where there's already some uh, you things you can leverage. So, and then the driver complement that you did, if you want to share anything about that, just to give the basics for people that are interested. Yeah, sure. Um, of course, uh, the, the bus driver is uh, changing from the naked to the naked RS. Of course, not only the, the not only the bus driver, but um, uh, you are you are. I mean, not a perfect uh, picture here, but let me say you have here the acoustic elegance uh, Dipol uh, woofer, uh, the Mundorf tweeter, the AMT tweeter, and uh, a custom made um, mid range. This is a magneto planner uh, mid range custom for us. It's not so easy to, to improve these, these, these components uh, as, you, as you may know. So this is the, the driver complements from the, from the speakers and the naked 
let me, which is here, of course, has different woofers. This is custom made too. And I, I can't, I can't uh, um, put it on the screen, but because, because it's too, too difficult to move here. But of course, the crossover is completely different. The cabling is completely different. And you also have uh, different diamond points uh, on the on the naked normal naked let's say uh, while the naked rs have uh, bigger diamond points than than the normal version let's say so these are more or less the the differences between the the two the two speakers and there's another base driver we're not seeing um as part of the the structure here uh, yeah, I, I will shake a little bit the picture. I'm sorry for this, but yeah, this is the second one. Yeah, and then the uh, you had the crossover exposed uh, to see the parts, very high quality parts, lots of parts involved, uh, pretty complex crossover from what I could tell in my primitive understanding, but I'm sure that was part of your six year of R&D getting this uh, just right. Cause I don't know if I would even touch the drivers you've got now. It sounded so good. Uh, uh, you've got yeah, it to yeah. a point where the realism and the coherency was what stood out to me. I've seen open baffle speakers, many of them, uh, and own some myself, uh, but getting that quality of each driver really at one of the pinnacles for its respective ranges of coverage, but getting them to meld together to sound like music was what I was probably most impressed with. And I assume that has a lot to do with the crossover. Yeah, you know, you touched one, one, one point, uh, which, which is important. People always, I mean, audiophile lovers are always asking about drivers, about a number of technical aspects. And uh, let me say, they tend to forget uh, that a project is a, a combination of factors, no? So not necessarily, if you put together the best woofer, the best mid-range, the best tweeter, the best whatever, you get the best speaker. Exactly the same way uh, if you put together the best basketball players, maybe you don't win the NBA. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, it's always in, in Italy, you know, we say, let the cook put the ingredients and cook. And this is this is the magic, you know, because you know, because you, you probably were uh, interested in buffalo less uh, speakers before. Many uh, companies and also do it yourself uh, um, people tried to do this kind of stuff. But as far as I know, I might, I might be wrong, but as far as I know, no one managed such uh, a sound with such a deep bass and, and such an energy um, before without DSP, without uh, amplification, I mean, uh, active amplification and without the buffle because they say it's buffless, but then a little bit of buffle is there. Uh, here you see just, uh, the needed frame to keep the, the, the woofers and the components, let's say, uh, into the structure. That's, that's, that's it. So really radicalizing the concepts, but to do this, we needed nearly 40 year experience on deep hole reproduction with MBL, for instance. We, had, we took a lot of experience installing and setting up MBL. Of course, I don't want to mix our image to, to MBL because uh, it's a completely different thing, but we got a lot of information and experience on how a, a, I mean, a, a deep pulled speaker is literally moving your room. Uh, so here you don't have a box that is fighting with the room to get the sound. And then you, you need to carefully position uh, the, the, the speaker. Of course, you, you need to do it also with the, with the naked. This is no, no question. But 
they are much more more forgiving in positioning in in uh, in, in a room. They can play in a big room. They can play in a little room. It's a uh, really particular and uh, again we solved a number of issues uh, because you perfectly know that uh, buffaloes speakers um, can solve some problems but also can bring you other problems in and so you need to take the good and you need to manage the bad otherwise you do like all other companies and if if you manage the bad with dsp or with active amplification, to us, it's no solution. And so, as I was saying, the magic we did was putting together the right components to get the sound you 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 listened in in, in Munich. And I'm sorry that the the rest of the of the people linked here uh, to to this meeting meeting uh, was not able to to listen yet the sound, but you know. When you when you listen the organ, mm -hmm. uh, you can confirm it, it blows you out. It really blows you out. Yeah, that track alone uh, stopped me in my tracks. I was about to leave your room, and I immediately heard that organ, and I was like, "Wait a second, that is so real, <laughs> and that is so deep for an open baffle bass." Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to go ahead and just assume that there was a trade off in the bass from what I was hearing with all the other material. We weren't testing that level. And I was just going to assume that, yeah, I would have this trade off if I got these speakers. But when I heard that bass, it literally, if you watch the video, I stopped and I stopped and I watched, I listened to the entire song, uh, which I rarely do as well. Now, is that I assume there is some trade off in a much bigger room. You can only get so much physics wise, um, but that room was pretty small. Most size rooms, you should be able to get similar performance. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely correct. And, and what what I, I mean, a hint uh, is, as I was saying before, you can have the naked play in a, in a little room. They will not suffer too much from, even though they are big speakers, huh? because it's a uh, one meter sixty something. So it's uh, it's not, I mean, it's not two meters, but still still quite quite huge. Uh, they should suffer the room in, in particular when it's when it's uh, little instead they, they are not uh, absolutely uh, of course there are a few tricks to position them in in, in, a, in a better or in in the best way but wherever you position them in a little room they will suffer much less than box the speakers uh, on, on on the other hand if you have a big room, now I, I can't show you this room, but it's 50 meters, so much double than the room you, 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 you listened in, in Munich, and 5.5 meters high. Forgive me, I don't know the, the translation in feet or... Uh, right, I, I, three, yeah, times three, it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's about 17 feet, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. So. Uh, it's um, uh, not so huge, but 50 meters, it's respectable, but the volume is big because you have 17 feet. So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's high and the volume is very big. So, you know, um, the speakers uh, here, any speaker can suffer a little bit. They don't, and you can have them playing in a big room on the long wall instead of on, uh, on the short one, if you wish, because they get profit uh, from the walls instead of uh, fighting them as usually uh, the box the speakers do. So this is a, I mean, I, I don't say this is the main characteristics, but it's something that helps people tuning the speakers in the room more easily than they usually do with other kind of speakers. This is something uh, I, I mean, we observed, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's only so much we can talk about sound quality wise uh, and technical side of things. Maybe there's gonna be somebody on this call today. Who's <laughs> gonna be the first one in this call that's gonna have actually 
I know the question, but who's going to be the first one on this call? We should take odds now to have the speaker in the USA. We're not going to tip off any hands, but probably somebody in this group will be it. But in any case, I wanted to get before I open up to questions and I'll change the view for everybody to get on the screen is um, obviously speakers nowadays, aesthetics are part of the equation as well. I think it's badass looking. Um, but the key thing is, well, one of the bespoke natures of this is you can basically anodize or paint this frame however you want. And then there is some leather at the bottom with custom stitching. So there is a level of aesthetics that, again, do it yourselfers or lower price point type attempts at hitting that price point. Part of the price point is going to be this aesthetic vibe and something that is really high end to the T and picking your own colors. And so uh, I'm very interested in uh, exploring that if I ever get the speaker for sure. The, the speaker can be painted uh, whatever roll and finishing uh, you, <clears throat> you wish. So imagine a car, you can have it with any uh, color that you can possibly imagine for, for a car because it can be done. So any kind of finishing, um, it match uh of course with leather uh, it can be vegan leather so eco leather let's say or natural leather or grind grind the uh, uh leather um which i prefer by the way any color of course uh, it takes a little bit time to to receive the speakers because they are custom so we don't stock 200 uh, speakers the same way I mean, 200 would be a stupid number because it's uh, really expensive, but nevertheless, they are not produced in mass series. Uh, they are produced on custom order. So you want it black and chrome, you will have a black and chrome. You want it red like, uh, like the, uh, the Naked RS we presented in Munich. Uh, this was hand painted. Uh, so, and, and you were there, so you can witness the perfection of the of the finishing. Yeah, stunning, yeah, stunning. stunning. Uh, it, it was painful more than stunning because, believe me, it, it caused a number of um, how can I say, polishing and repainting and repolishing and repainting and whatever, because of the structure. Because this is not a car which has let's say flat surfaces and big surfaces you have a number of uh, you know all the all, all the structure in, in there the paint is going to stuck and create uh, imperfection and so we needed really to care every square centimeter of the speaker was cared maniacally then again it's a it's a hand manufactured so but if you if you wish i can move the the iPad and, and, and take uh, a little bit the speaker too. Let me, let me know. Okay, so again, here you have uh, the steel feet with diamond points. Um, that's a very particular solution. And for instance, the feet are not turning into the, um, let's say the metal plate that they are on, so you don't scratch them. So again, another particular solution. And you can see the stitching here. In this case, it's red. We chose uh, a racing uh, kind of stitching. You can see this kind of stitching on uh, steering wheels in sports cars usually, or this kind of stuff, because the structure is, is red. And so we coupled, let's say, these two things together. So when you choose the, the leather, you can also choose the color of the stitching, the way the speakers are stitched and everything else in the, in, in the color and the finishing of the, of the speakers. Sorry, I'm moving. So the image will, uh, will move a little bit. So you see it's very big and we used the bigger components. I mean, the top components we could from Mundorf. Uh, this is, this yeah, is very it. clean. Uh -huh. No, I love sorry it. For, and sorry for the, the shape. 
No problem. The three point basing I've always found also a little more stable than four. Um, so that's also nice to see. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll open it up for uh, questions. I'm gonna change to immersive view. And then I wanna give Robert a chance to give, cause he's the only other one that's heard it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the view and um, let Robert share his impressions here. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, you know, uh, it's funny because Munich was such a big show that we literally are walking around for two or three days and you can't really see everything. So when I got there the first day, you know, it, it was funny because I wasn't technically, you know, blown away by anything that I heard. You know, um, you know, I was telling um, someone uh, just today, Jerry, today when we were on the phone, I was telling him that, you know, sometimes when we go from room to room to room, our ears become pretty numb. You know, we, we you know, after all those different rooms, everything sort of sounds the same. Everything, that, everything sort of gets blended together. And so what happens is, is that, you know, sometimes you expect to hear a lot, but you don't because, you know, after a while, everything sounds the same. And then it was funny because the third day that I was there, you know, I was planning on not going to the show at all. And then I got a text from Jason saying, hey, you got to come hear this. And it was a room that was sort of off to the side. So I, I didn't even get to bump into the room in the first two days I was there. But when I went into the room specifically because Jason told me about it, you know, my attention got caught right away, you know, and, and that doesn't happen a lot. You know, I'm, I, not a lot of anything really catches my attention because I have so many different systems at my place and I've, I've had so many different uh, brands of gear that I'm pretty familiar with a lot of things that are out there. I'm pretty familiar with um, the, the sound of certain gear and so forth, but this was very different for me. It caught my attention. You know, I, I sat there with Jason for quite a few songs and I, I came back actually, uh, a second time and I almost never do that. And and I, I got a chance to have a real listen. And there's a lot of things that I really like. You know, one of the things I really like about what EO is doing is the fact that they're not afraid to change uh, to change away from just a very standard wheel. You know, you see a lot of companies putting together putting together a wheel. And, and when they try to improve that wheel, all they're doing is adding a couple of bells and whistles here and they call it something new. And I, and I saw a lot of speakers that I've known have been around for 10, 20 years and they put this year's version of that speaker out. And sometimes the only thing they change is just the terminal in the back. You know, it's still the same wood, it's still the same uh, design, it's still the same materials, nothing a lot has changed and, and so, what I really liked about the EO design is that they're not afraid to push the limits of design. You know, sometimes there's not enough talent coming into the industry. And, and I feel that what they've done is they've brought in talent from their own experience, but they're also bringing in talent from other companies. So in my experience, when I listen to the speakers, like Jason, I expected to have you know, a speaker that was maybe lacking on the bass a little bit. I was excited, you know, I knew that we were gonna get, uh, you know, a very smooth and, and, and cohesive mid-range. I, I, you know, it's the air motion tweeter. So I, I'm very familiar with tweeters. I have, you know, the ribbons and the air motion tweeters, but I didn't expect the bass I was gonna hear and everything came together. And to me, it was, it was one of the best sounding uh, experiences I had at Munich, and that's why I, I got very interested, and and I, I got on this journey to find out more about this speaker, because you know that that actually sort of made the trip for me, and I was very excited. You know, the rooms that I knew were going to sound pretty good, they sounded good. The rooms that I thought were going to sound good, some of those rooms didn't sound that good, and and these are rooms that that when they didn't sound that good, I even came back a second time to see why it didn't sound good. Maybe it was a bad day and still I, I left saying, well, I, I thought it would have been better, 
but this was one of the rooms that actually made the show for me. And that's why now I'm on this call because I'm very interested in uh, being part of uh, this, uh, this uh, revolution of being able to bring this speaker into the United States and, and get, to get a chance to try it out. 